Welcome to the online tutorial for the MATLAB Finite Element Program for solving 2D elastic problems in biomechanics, a program developed by Dr. Michael Miga at Vanderbilt University. The purpose of the first session is to introduce you to the program, walk you through an example of generating a mesh, and perform a few analytical operations to give you an idea of what the program is capable of. Subsequent tutorial sessions will include solutions to an example problem and a lesson on constructing custom mesh patterns. This online session should be considered supplemental to the instruction you're getting in class and should not be considered a substitute. If you wish to run MATLAB and follow along with me, make sure the current directory includes the image we're examining along with the M files or P files comprising the finite element program suite. Okay, let's get started. We'll begin by importing our JPEG image from our current directory into the main workspace. We can accomplish this by using the imread function. Notice the image appears as a 2D 256 by 256 array in the workspace. We can view the image using imshow. Now that the image exists in our workspace, we use the program make mesh to generate our mesh model. The figure appears and we are prompted to enter the number of boundaries. For the brain example, we will choose two boundaries. One will separate the internal ventricle boundary from the surrounding brain tissue, and the second will define the perimeter of the brain tissue. Enter two. We are instructed to click on points to create a continuous boundary. Notice the cross-hatched pointer facilitates point selection. Outer boundaries should be defined by proceeding counterclockwise. Close the boundary by moving the pointer over the start point. When the pointer becomes a circle, double-click the mouse to close the boundary. Upon closing the boundary, we are asked to designate the material number left and right of the boundary. A material number designates a particular type of homogeneous material possessing specific physical properties. Material properties should be assigned using only positive integers in ascending order. A zero designation indicates empty space surrounding the continuum. To properly decide which numbers to use, imagine walking along the boundary we've traced. As I walk, the brain is always on my left and empty space is always on my right. So the material numbers are one and zero respectively. Be sure to bracket the numbers one and zero. We still have another boundary to trace. Since the second boundary lies inside the outer boundary, we trace it clockwise. Again, close by double clicking the start point. To designate the material number, we imagine walking the boundary in the direction it was traced. Since I trace clockwise this time, the brain tissue, which has already been numbered, is on my left and the ventricle is on my right, so my inputs are 1 and 2 respectively. A mesh figure now appears and we are asked if we want to refine the image. Refining the mesh increases the degree of discretization, 
but it also increases the computing load on our processor. So we'll strike a compromise and refine the mesh twice. Next, we define the material properties of each material type. Since we specified two material numbers, we input two sets of material properties. The, materi the three material properties solicited by the program are Young's modulus, Poisson's ratio, and density. The first two play a major role in the numeric computation of mechanical response. Density isn't as important for the algorithm, but it is necessary for the program to work properly. The units for the three inputs are Pascals for Young's modulus, no units for Poisson's ratio, and kilograms per cubic meters for density. Here we will enter approximate values. First for material one, and next for material two. To properly scale the image, we need to specify the pixel length. In other words, we need to tell the program how big our image is by telling it how much space is covered by each pixel in the image array. For the brain image, the pixel size is one millimeter. Enter one to enter the conversion factor, and then enter the conversion factor, which is one millimeter. We have entered all of the relevant information needed to create our mesh model. We will now save the information in a collection of files which we can later summon when we need to run mechanical simulations. We name these files whatever we like, but it is advisable to use descriptive names and extensions. Brain nod for the node file, brain elm for the element file, brain bell for the boundary element file, and brain prop for the material property file. Our image now appears surrounded by nodes and we are asked to define boundary conditions. Boundary conditions are simply stresses or displacements we choose to exert on a subset of the outermost boundary of our model. We can use boundary conditions to stretch, compress, or fix a portion of the mesh. For this example, we will s simulate head trauma by fixing a portion of the boundary on the right and, compress and compressing a left boundary subset by one millimeter. Use the cross pointer to enclose the boundary to be affected and double click on the start point to close. The enclosed boundary nodes should turn green. The program allows you to decide which way to, you wish to express the boundary conditions. For most biological applications, it makes sense to use the normal to tangential to boundary reference frame. So we'll use that by entering 1. Enter 0 for displacement in the normal direction. and then enter the value of compression. Compressions are expressed as negative numbers while tension is positive. We apply no tangential compression or displacement of any kind. Enter zero now for not done to designate a second boundary condition. Since we are fixing the right boundary, all displacement inputs will be zero.
enter one for done, and save the boundary conditions as brain.bcs. Now that your mesh, material properties, and boundary conditions are defined, you are ready to generate analytical data. Use the following function to run the model. A set of variables should appear in your workspace. Those variables are A, your image, SX, SY, and TXY, stresses in the X, Y, and shear directions, UX, UY, VX, and VY, are the partial derivatives characterizing the strain for each triangular element. V is a 2 by n array consisting of the x and y displacements. E, P, and T are the arrays designating the edges, points, and triangles respectively. Now we use the PDE mesh and PDE plot commands to explore our solution. Here are some examples. This command will create a color map of X displacements over the continuum. By changing the column of data selected under variable v from the first column to the second column will give us a color map of the y displacements. Here are the two figures. x displacement, y displacement. We can also do combinations. The PDE mesh command highlights the boundary. What we see is the essential flow field of displacements in meters, as well as the stress sigma x in pascals uh, is shown on the color bar. Here's what it looks like. This concludes the introductory tutorial.